a warm welcome to WISIS Forum 2016. This WISIS Forum is special and extremely important as it is the first after the United Nations General Assembly WISIS Review that was held in December last year. The United Nations General Assembly recognized the necessity of holding the WISIS Forum on an annual basis and called for a close alignment between the WISIS and the sustainable development process and its targets. On the occasion of the United Nations General Assembly review, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General said, we will strengthen the WISIS Forum as a key platform for discussing the role of ICTs as a mean of implementation of the SDGs and targets. In particular, UN Action Line facilitating agencies um, were requested by the United Nations General Assembly uh, to review their reporting and work plans to support the implementation of the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development. The WISIS Forum has been the perfect example of collaboration and partnership between the UN agencies. Last year, depending on our mandates, uh, we developed a WISIS Action Lines and SDG matrix uh, that maps the sustainable development goals with the WISIS Action Lines and gives us the clear linkage between the two. I am joined here today uh, with a few Action Line facilitators who will talk to us about the fresh priorities, the challenges, the opportunities uh, that this new era brings for us. Good morning, Mike Nelly. Uh, Mike is the Action Line facilitator of C4 Capacity Building. Capacity building is crucial for the development of any project and for ICT for D projects in particular to facilitate sustainable development. Can you share some of the challenges and opportunities that we see in this regard? Thank you, Gitanjali, uh, for that question. Uh, capacity building is actually about developing the skills and competencies of people to do something. And in this respect, you will find that capacity building is cutting across every single SDG uh, that we have. Here we are talking about uh, raising people's awareness, talking about education, we are talking about training, we are also talking about the concept of lifelong learning. And you will find this across uh, whether it is innovators who develop life-changing um, innovations or it's policy makers who have to uh, put in place policy frameworks that guide the development agenda or even if we look at people who are implementing programs, all these people, there's one thread that runs through them, they need to have capacity. So we find that the challenge is to ensure that capacity building is all inclusive, it's not just uh, for some stakeholders, leaving other stakeholders, because across the development value chain, everybody needs to have capacity building in order for sustainable development goals to be achieved. Thank you, Mike. Uh, education and lifelong learning, indeed, extremely crucial for the uh, attainment of the sustainable development goals. Uh, what role do the ICTs in particular play in capacity building for achieving the uh, sustainable development goals? Oh, a very big role. Actually, as you know, that uh, one of the things that were challenging uh, the community was uh, digital exclusion. In other words, there were some people in communities that were not included in the digital society simply because they, A, they did not have enough money to go to school, they did not have um, uh, access to ICTs. But thanks to mobile uh, uh, access, uh, we find now that people can actually develop their capacities through mobile learning. There are many cases and many examples of uh, digital literacy programs, digital e-skills programs that have been accessed mostly by people in remote areas that never had the opportunity. So ICTs are playing a role as enablers for capacity building um, uh, to, to, in, to ensure that everybody is included in the digital society. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Indeed, ICTs as enablers uh, for capacity building, uh, for, for achieving the sustainable development goals. Um, we have here with us today Mr. Denis Suzar from uh, UNDESA. Uh, he is the Action Line facilitator of Action Line C1, C11 and C7 e-governance. Um, 
uh, Dennis, uh, what role does uh, do you know international uh, and regional collaborations and partnerships play uh, in this new era of VSIS and SDGs? And uh, how, what are the opportunities and challenges that you see? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Gitanjali, for hosting us here during the VSIS Forum 2016. Uh, Yuandesa is the action line facilitator for C1, uh, the promotion of ICTs for uh, development by governments and all stakeholders, C11, international and regional cooperation, and C7, ICT applications e-government. This year, uh, in order to give the uh, dessert credit to uh, all uh, action lines, we will have two facilitation meetings. Uh, there are many things that governments can do and also other stakeholders can do for promoting ICTs for development. We see many initiatives around the world, uh, to name a few. This is, is one of the most important ones. This week uh, we will be, uh, we will be uh, making, voices, uh, making our voices heard about the role of ICTs for sustainable development goals. Uh, Internet Governance Forum is another uh, important uh, initiative that was created at the end of uh, Tunis Agenda in, two, in 2005. Uh, it's a multi-stakeholder uh, policy forum for discussing all internet governance related issues. But we need to see more uh, promotion of ICTs by all stakeholders, especially to address digital divides and also uh, to make sure that users have uh, trust and security in the online space. So uh, when we talk about uh, digital divides, access is one of the main areas, but we should also focus on real access, affordability, content, capabilities, uh, and uh, we need more initiatives in these areas. Access, affordability and content to bridge the digital divide, yes, ex indeed, extremely crucial. Uh, you are also the facilitator of e-government. Uh, mm -hmm. wh what uh, opportunities do you see uh, in, in this era of uh, VSIS action lines and SDGs? Mm -hmm. E-government uh, is the delivery of public services through online platforms. Uh, and e-government can contribute to uh, many SDGs. Uh, thanks to e-government, those citizens who were not able to access public services can now access services through their mobile phones, through, uh, through community places where they can connect to internet. So e-government makes uh, government uh, operations more effective, more efficient, and also it can give transparency. Uh, it gives uh, opportunities for citizens to participate in uh, decision making. Uh, and <clears throat> many, uh, there are also many uh, larger potentials for governments to make use of ICTs for, uh, to achieve sustainable development through e-government. Thank you, Dennis. Uh Dennis, uh, Dennis highlighted the role of partnerships, collaborations uh, among stakeholders to achieve the sustainable development goals. Uh, the WISIS Forum this year uh, is, uh, uh, is expecting more than 1,800 participants, uh, UN agencies, civil society uh, participants, more than 80 ministers. So we hope that it will be a perfect venue for collaborations and partnerships uh, to achieve the sustainable development goals using the uh, VSIS action lines and ICTs. Uh, well, we have here with us today also Sophie Maddens from ITU who uh, facilitates the VSIS action line uh, C6 enabling environment. Uh, Sophie, what are the key uh, challenges, opportunities and fresh priorities you see in the area of enabling environment? Thank you, Gitanjali. I think today we really are seeing a huge amount of opportunities with technology, trends and evolutions. We've basically moved from a world of second generation mobile to third to fourth and now stand at the eve of fifth generation mobile technologies. 
that in itself will open a world of opportunities. Just think of artificial intelligence, M2M, cloud computing. We're also seeing technology players offer new opportunities, new uh, facilities. We're looking at high altitude platforms, drones, the high throughput satellites. So all of these elements together will really make a difference in providing connectivity to people around the world. And that brings us also to the Internet of Things. We're seeing smart societies, smart uh, smart cities, smart things, the Internet of Things, the Internet of Everything. So we are having smarter societies, individuals, communities. Think of smart water, smart energy, smart electricity. That in itself will also provide opportunities, but it also provides a challenge for the enabling environment because there will need to be collaboration so as, a, as to understand these opportunities and the challenges and the technological changes. So I think that is something we really want to take into into consideration when determining the enabling environment. Uh, thank you, Sophie. Uh, do you have an example to share with us where uh, we have uh, had a perfect enabling environment for, uh, for facilitating ICTs to achieve the development goals? Well, a perfect enabling environment, that's work in progress, but we have seen the evolution of regulation and policy making. If you think that just a couple of decades ago, telecommunications ICTs were basically seen as a public service offered by government. It was like water, electricity, but it was seen as a luxury. It was mainly offered on a monop monopolistic basis. Then we had the introduction of competition, and so we, we evolved through the generations of regulation from monopolistic to slightly liberalized to the opening up of competition and privatizing to really the supervising and getting the competitive framework right to now, as I said, at the eve of the fifth generation regulation. What do I mean by this fifth generation regulation? Well, we are seeing, particularly with all the discussion on the sustainable development goals, ICTs are really at the core of the achievement of many of the sustainable development goals. So we, need, we are seeing the need for collaboration for an inclusive dialogue amongst all stakeholders so that together we can make a difference, together ICTs can help to achieve the sustainable development goals and that to me is the best example of how our enabling regulatory environment has made a difference to uh, the sustainable development goals. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, indeed, together we can make a difference. Uh, WISIS is uh, really unique because it is one of the only platforms that is multi-stakeholder uh, which engages with the different stakeholder types uh, and all the different action lines facilitated by the different UN agencies um, ensure that the voice of each and every stakeholder is heard. Uh, we thank you very much for uh, being with us here today. We will have another round of uh, interview with uh, different action line facilitators uh, to hear more about the key priorities, the trends, uh, the challenges, uh, this new era of WISIS and uh, sustainable development goals bring to the WISIS action line facilitators. We thank you very much. Thank you for following us and we'll see you next time.